Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, and welcome to the Castle Talk Podcast, where we talk to writers and creators of today's genre world. From Denver, Colorado, I'm your host, Jason Henderson, author of the Alex Van Helsing series from HarperCollins, and my co-host tonight is attorney Julia Guzman of Guzman Immigration. This week, we're talking to the duo of Bridget Nelson and Mary Jo Peel, who perform commentary with riff tracks, especially focusing on mid-century industrial films with such titles as Duties of a Secretary, The Snob, the Prom, It's a Pleasure, both are from Minnesota, both were, performer, were performers for years on the TV program MST3K, but it's only in recent years that your work as a duo has really taken off. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I thought this was my phone interview for my job at Ikea. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops, Bridget. We I'm like so this. sorry. <laughs> I have to go. What, what, no, what I'm fine. Do you have, what skills do you have to work at Ikea, just out of curiosity? Where do you see yourself in five years, Bridget? I am a people person, and <laughs> I love Scandahoovians, so I should probably do really good. <laughs> Don't they have, like, free ice cream at Ikea? I swear to God that I've been there, like, early in the morning, and they force free coffee and ice cream on you. Oh, like, that's I the don't thing know. I'll have, to, I'll have to go I've back, I guess. I've been lost at Ikea, but that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah. It has arrows. Right. But, Mary Jo, we could meet there, because that would be a good place for us to have our roof tracks meetings. We could have yeah, free have coffee our, and ice cream. our writing cream. meeting? Yes. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Okay, okay. I have to ask though. Speaking of IKEA, which somehow is Scandinavian, you you guys are both from Minnesota. Are you like from close? For, did you grow up near one another? I mean, are are, are you like within a stone's throw or or, or Well, um, I think in the big cosmic sense, we're pretty close to each other. In the you know, if you measure it by universal standards, <laughs> but um, I grew up in a small town. Um, uh, a little bit north of the Twin Cities, and Bridget would have been like what an hour and a half away from me. Yeah, more up, more yeah. in central, more in central Minnesota. Yeah, I'm from well, like um, Lake Wobegon, like what um, Garrison oh, Keillor wow. writes about. I'm exactly <laughs> from right there. <laughs> Ew, that's awesome. Is that true, no, Bridget? I, I yes. met him once. I, I, I met mean, that guy once. It 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 was the, it's probably it's one of the centrally embarrassing. Uh, celebrity sightings I ever had because I was at a train station and he walked by and I said, Mr. Keeler, you know, like I had something to say to him. And he goes, yes. And I go, um, I always admired your work. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, oh, okay. And that was it. That was the. And then off he went <laughs> with his gigantic yeah. head. Yes. <laughs> He's a really, really large melon, I have noticed. Now, here's a thing that not a lot of people know, that both Bridget's and my father were <clears throat> mayors of our respective towns growing Are up. Are you serious? I am oh, totally God. serious. Yes. So you got to hear that stuff, like the, the whole city council, uh, city politics craziness. Well, I was, oh. I was too young, but. But Mary Jo and I, too, you know, we talk a lot about the stresses that that brought in our lives and, being you know, the responsibility, family, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being political families. Yes. <laughs> the dynasty. <laughs> the Kennedys of Lake Wobegon's nearby twin. Yes. And the Yes, and, the yes, okay. and Wally Jones. Uh, I, you, you went with the Kennedys. I was thinking more like the Trumps or the Bushes oh, or something. Oh, Christ. No. <laughs> no. Uh, the Clintons. Clinton, no. <laughs> so, Although I do uh, have a lot of tanning cream on as we speak. <laughs> the, uh, well, okay, here's here's what I wanted to ask you because we were, we were, I mean, at least a place to start. We we're watching some of these industrial shorts, and I'm just really yeah. curious. You, you guys really have glommed on to these sort of, I don't even know what you call this material, but it's like social, instructive, mid-century material. First of all, what brings you to this material, and, and, and you know? How do you find it? Yeah. How do you find no. it, but why do you want to keep doing it? I mean, it's really interesting. Well, I think part of it, and, and I think Bridget can speak more to why we keep doing them, but um, what, one one thing is, is that they're readily available, that uh, there's not, they're usually public domain, and um, also they provide rich fodder with their 
their um, you know prescriptive instruction yeah. is is fascinating and um, the sad tales of these people is rich <laughs> fodder for us. So throw yeah. in Bridget, what do you think? I, I um, yes, I would agree. I would I would say that it's more about availability than Mary Jo and I really feeling that we need to you know dive into mm-hmm. the depths of this. However. Um, they're, they do leave you a little more room, just the way that they um, film things and paste them with the writing gives us more riffing room as opposed to once the late 70s and 80s hit, they kept it music going and, and um, action, and it, they're a little bit harder, I think. Right, right. But There's also, something. I think we talk about, uh, Mary Jo and I talk about a lot of it's like, what the heck was their problem with everyone? Like, just leave these yeah. poor girls alone. <laughs> I know, and it's always girls. Like, I don't know that we can claim that there was a theme running through them, but um, just based on the small sampling, but there's um, at least two or three where um, the narrator who's representing um, society at large yeah. doesn't like that the girl might study too much. Yeah. It's very weird. That was the social acceptability one. Remember, it was like, well, you know, you can be like this geek over here who doesn't care if anybody likes him. But if yeah, you know, but there's another like, one too. There's another one too where they kind of like, oh, you're you're too interested in being smart. I can't remember offhand, but God. yeah, one of the reasons I, I was interested in, in talking with you guys is that I'm. I think it's really interesting to hear your perspective on. The, the shorts versus the guys, you know, and uh, because, uh, you know, you, you obviously you're seeing it as women and you're going, so this is, we just came from this in the last 50 years or less. This is where we would have been if we had been this, you know, if we had been growing up 50 years ago. Um, and I'm fascinated by that because, of course, I am as well, you know, and so it's just like I, I really enjoy hearing you guys talk about it as if, oh, well, of course, this is how it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, right, right. Um, Jason, plug your ears because I think it all comes down to, to tampons because <laughs> 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 I think the world, I think things are a little bit, I do, I sometimes think like the whole it was harder for girls because they had stuff to attend to and there was so much apparatus. And I, cause we, we make a lot of jokes on that one too. Mary Jo and I do like about, Oh, they're free. They're on their bikes or whatever, because there was a time in history when all of the sudden yeah. they, that, that part of the world changed and girls could do all that stuff. Well, yeah, and, the bras yeah. and the pill and all those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Right. I would also throw in, and again, based on a small sampling, so much of this material is directed at um, controlling women or making sure that women knew the rules. Like there's a real imposition of um, uh, an assumed social structure on girls, which is is both hilarious and disturbing to me. Right, right. I mean, and sometimes, um, Mary Jo, I think we laugh because we're like, well, I sometimes I kind of agree where they're like teaching them how to how to answer the phone and what's proper. You're kind of like, yeah, it'd be kind of nice if a kid answered the phone nicely like that. Yeah. And yet, on the <laughs> other hand, you know what I mean? Or like, yeah, it is nice to sit straight and whatever, whatever. But then on the yeah. other hand, who the hell's business? Who who did this? Who's writing this? And then well, right. it often turns they, out to be they, a woman writing it, which the oh, yeah. well, woman right. from Iowa. Yeah, and I think (laughs) you pay more attention to the credits than I do, but but all that stuff is um, more often I feel like laid at the girls' doorstep. Like here's what you know, you don't you don't see it directed at at how boys need to do it. But again, I have a small sampling. It's just really interesting to me. There was right. one that they did um, a while back, um, I guess on MST, where it was the date with the family. Oh yeah, you know, and we quote that one all the time. I think because... Hugh Beaumont was the was the voice. On yeah, that. but we quote that one all the time because it was just so funny that you know, d- f- don't bother father with unpleasant topics at dinner. So we always say that whenever somebody says something brought to you, we're like, don't bother your father with unpleasant <laughs> topics at dinner. <laughs> So I think. That's, oh, that's right. Because then the girl was talking, and they did. They, yeah. they didn't have any talking. They just had her showing like someone had like a big mouth and a big bow yeah, on yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. I mean, that's just not the world we live in. I, I, the, this whole this whole world where 
everybody's going to walk around and you know put on a brave, put on like a like a nice presentation at, at dinner and not disturb your father with asking him for money or or anything that might I, you know the idea that your father is this tyrant who's going to come in and has to be carefully tiptoed around is um yeah we don't know anything about like about that do we jason well i'm just i'm just saying <laughs> oh I'm, I'm just you saying guys need to a, hang up and talk yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, one thing though, uh, you know, I was thinking about Phoebe, the the Canadian one about the the girl who's pregnant, and this one, this one is uh, 1970s, I think. Mm-hmm. No, 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 it was like no, it was earlier than that. No, no, it was 64 because it was, it was um, whoops, it was around a time when uh, someone might have been born. I understand. <laughs> 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 someone, some some person that will re- remain nameless. So, no, but the 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 thing of it is, it's this beautiful. Um, I mean, it's very interesting. She has a horrible boyfriend, but I heard real emotion coming from you guys as you were watching it. And you know, even though you're there to make jokes, the jokes are often, you know, really kind of cynical. But there was there was real. I think Bridget, it was you who said, you know, I'm feeling emotions about this girl. I'm feel, feeling. I feel. We yeah. both were. We just, yeah, at the end, we were. We felt like, oh, it's 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 a sad thing, you know, living yeah. in Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will tell you, half the time when Bridget and I are recording a riff track, we will start missing lines because we get so caught up in what's, what's going on on screen. And it's something that we've already seen like eight or ten times, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you'll be aware of a, of a new uh, wrinkle in it or um, a, a character's attitude, and then all of a sudden, I'll get so caught up in, yeah, we, oh, I, never, I never noticed that before. Yeah. Do you think that blah, blah, blah is blah, blah, blah? It's <laughs> so true, Mary Jo, because we used to do it on the TV show, too. We'd, too, we'd be in the writing room, because then we'd just be sitting next to each other on the couch, and we'd be like, oh, no, I wonder... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, we're supposed to be writing. <laughs> I, you know, it, it's I, well. I have to say though that that expression though that you allow to come out, like occasionally I say, I'm having Catholic flashbacks about this. I think Mary Jo. <laughs> yeah, that kind of I, can, stuff, I can relate to that. But that's a level of of personalization that we don't actually. See. This is not a critique of the guys, but right. I would say that is a flavor that you guys bring. To to this work that isn't there in some of the others, and, and interesting. It's, I, you know, I don't yeah. know if you're conscious of it or not. It's funny that you say that, Jason, because um, and they were interviewing Bruce Springsteen last night on NPR, and they said almost the same thing. Like, uh, your music t- it shows reveals so much more about you than than Bob Dylan's did about him, and I thought it was really interesting comparison and here you are making kind of the same you're saying that they're riffs oh, right. they're Bruce Springsteen I'm saying they're Bruce Springsteen right they're the boss as opposed to the boss all right I don't even know <laughs> oh yeah now wait a minute now I, does Bruce Springsteen have a riffing program because I have not <laughs> hey, he's pretty funny but not as funny okay. Guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he's a way better riffer than, than Dylan but you yeah. know okay I would say two things on that one um uh, it's just how I think Mary Jo and I our friendship and and um so we try to bring that in. But at first, remember, MJ, when we first recorded it, then we kind of redid our – we re-recorded our first two ones because people around us were saying, you know what, it's mo- it's – we like That's it the right. most when you guys are more relaxed because we really got worried, like, no, we got to get our jokes in. And then everyone said, gosh, we actually really like it when you're a little looser. So um, yeah. we, we were a little gave- formal. A little formal with the process, sorry to interrupt you, a little formal with the process because we um, are joke writers and we came up doing stand-up comedy, so I think we were really uh, hewing to the discipline of it and losing sight of that part of it was our interaction with each other and yeah. So. Right. Yeah, so we had to let go a little bit, which is hard when you're a writer because you do spend, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. you spend an hour or two on, you know, two jokes. It just it doesn't come, and then it yeah. finally comes, and you want to get that joke in. But then, yeah. you know, um, I am Mary Jo cracks me up, and I laugh, and I miss the joke, and we decide that's funnier than our joke. So let's leave it in. <laughs> yeah, I, I way prefer it when it sounds like the folks are having a good time that, than if, if they sound like they've been really practiced and they've got it, you know, down to a science. And 
Yeah, it's a lot more fun because you feel like you're really, you know, I, I, one feels like I feel that I can relate to you guys if you're chuckling and laughing and kind of tripping all over each other because that's, right. you know, then it feels like, hey, you know, we're all humans and we're all having a good time here. Right, right, right. right. Wow, cool. Well, and I think it's easier with two of us than like with the, uh, with, um, when it's three people, that's always harder, the three rivers, because then that's three people. If you're goofing around, that's three people goofing around. Do you know what I mean? There's just a different dynamic. Mm-hmm. Could you talk a little bit about, because I, it's a mystery to me, but you, you made a mention of there of the writing process. I, you know, I, Don't go any deeper than you want to, but I'd love to hear how the hell that actually happens. Like once you choose a film, like you say, well, this has some definite possibilities. What is the process of, of writing that thing? Does it take a long time? I mean, I don't understand how you figure out how to fill the spaces with jokes. Um, you know, do you assign it to one another? Uh, give us a little bit of that process. Hmm. How do we do that, Mary Jo? Well, um, Bridget uh, will usually get the time-coded copy, and then she, excuse me, <coughs> shares it with me via the computer and mm-hmm. then she'll divvy it she'll divvy it up. She assigns um the different parts and then we each write from home and then we combine a document. Uh, I don't think I'm really answering your question. No, that's like, that's but that's we kind of really we break it, it okay. down. We break it down like like if it's short, we do like if it's a half an hour, it's like I'll do the first half, you do the second half or whatever. Or if it's longer then we chunk it up in ten or fifteen minute intervals and then put it all together. So that what I like is, is that you can't tell. It doesn't feel like different chunks. Like one, like one of you has written it one way, because you know sometimes you, you watch a show and you can tell who the writer was of any given episode because sure. the writing style oh, is so different. Cool. But you guys have yeah. a good, uh, good mix where it doesn't feel like, oh, clearly, you know, Mary Jo wrote this part, and clearly Bridget well, wrote this nice. part because it's a different voice. It sounds it that's makes, really it cool. Well. See, it's so great, Mary Jo. See, you're saving my ass just like I planned. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to throw you under the bus, as they say. But I mean, like, if you've got a joke, that, that or, or rather, if you've got a uh, a scene that is happening and, and you have a space here, you both come back the following day. Do you often find it's the case where you've each got a gag or maybe a couple of gags and and, and you, do you just throw them at one another and try to decide which one is landing better? Well, since we're um each we're, we're each presenting our own section. So oh. when we when we review it, um if one of us has doesn't understand the joke or can't quite get a bead on it, then we might pitch something else or or if the territory has been covered in another section. We're, so we're constantly refining and pitching other jokes and um, trying to step back a little bit and get the bigger picture. So it's always it's always being massaged, I guess. Does that answer your question? It certainly does. I mean, although it sounds really stressful. I mean, I've written a lot of comic books with co-writers, right, where we yeah. throw the script back and forth and, I'll say, okay, you take you take chapter one, I'll take chapter two, and then we pass them back and forth to you know to have an, an audience. But the stress to to me the the extra added thing of trying to get the person to laugh at a gag that seems like a very I mean you guys are comedians so this is just the the water that you swim in. But well, the extra added stress is working with Bridget Jones Nelson. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Wow. <laughs> Stern task masker, master that I am. What do you want to do? Mask tasker? Did I just say mask What did I say? Ta- mask tasker? It sounded like mask tasker. Actually, mask tasker, tasker sounds like a very interesting person. I'm the mask tasker. But, you know, well, for example, for example, I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a script right now, and there's about 27 Phyllis Diller jokes. So we'll have to go through. <laughs> but see, that could be really funny because then it becomes like the absurdist. You know, it's like, oh, and here's another Phyllis Diller joke. We're just gonna, we're just gonna. Well, yeah, and on. that that speaks to like what tone we've decided to go for, or how we can yeah. justify it to each other. And a lot of times we'll come in with something, um, uh, a, a sort of a plan, like. I know this isn't going to make sense when you first see this line, but the bigger thing is in sort of pitch a little skitlet that might play out through the rest of the script. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But we often we often think of the same kinds of things, and then we know, like, okay, we have to 
uh, yeah, we've yeah. hidden enough. Now we let's. I'll go this direction, right. or I'll go like, "Oh, Mary Jo, your joke's better," or mine comes first in the script, and it's obvious. So let's do it now because the next one's not as obvious. You know, it's it kind of yeah, comes down right. to like ranging furniture sometimes. Like, well, we can't put it by the co- you know the couch by the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These don't go together, or we fit them yep. too much. You know, I, it seems to me you've probably got lots more of these uh, of these industrials where these came from. I. You know, so I, I assume you're not going I to hope. run out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you do plan to just keep doing these things, correct? I don't know, Mary Jo. What do you think? I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, of course. What's not to, I mean, it's a blast. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a total blast. We just have to go back to the, the mine I mean, and like, kind of dig for more shorts. Yeah, do you right. think that that's... Do people understand? Uh, and maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm really curious. If I'm a if I'm a, a 25 year old, you know, with a sense of irony, so the humor here will connect with me pretty well. I'm just curious what a person born after the year 2000, you know, or, or whatever, has if they if, well, a person be 16. I apologize. A person born in the late, you know, in the 1990s, whether they would understand the context of all of these things. In other words, is it just an alien world to them? Do they say, oh, that's clearly the late 40s? I mean, I'm, I really wonder, as we, as we get farther and farther into the century, what these mm-hmm. industrials look like to them. Wow. You mean like they're going to start looking like herky-jerky, like, you know, like how when you watch anything, it's like, the 1920s, they show that same picture of those right. same flappers. Right, right, right. <laughs> people people stuffing, stuffing phone, book, phone booths and, and, and all that stuff. I, I don't know. Or, I, I, yeah. The thing is, when I was growing up in the middle of the century, I was born, you know. In the, the middle of the century. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you 80? How old are you? <laughs> no, my point, is, my point is, I was born sometime in the Nixon administration, right? So right. to me... Looking at stuff that was on TV, you know, Dagwood, Dagwood and Blondie, that stuff was, was being filmed in the 1940s. To me, you look at it, hey, you know, hey, that's only 30 years ago. Um, right. That world looks like my world. But as we get farther and farther along, as we get closer to 50 years out from this stuff or, or, or more, um, you know, and, well, with the late 40s stuff, it's 60 years out. It's an alien world. It's so strange. It's like you guys are now doing riffs about missives from an alien planet that doesn't even look like ours anymore. Well, that's definitely true. Yeah. But I don't, I don't even know how that works as a question. I apologize. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, just, I'm just listening. Just hang well, on there. I would say one thing is um, – People do like color ones more. I mean, we talk about that a lot. Like, oh, let's do this one. It's color. It, it's Are just, you serious? They like the yeah. color more. I mean, not That's not always our audience, but I'm I'm kind of mindful of it. I think about that. I was trying to get a younger audience. Like, at least have it be color. Yeah. Because some young people, I mean, they just. I don't know. They just don't That's like it. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah, know if that's a don't. real deal or not. What do you think, Mary Jo? I I don't know. I think um, I think if you. Uh, uh, have been immersed in a certain form, like color, it's going to come more natural to you. But, um, but Bridget, you you were born during um, the black and white era. I came along <laughs> during the color era. So maybe you more about that. Well, you know, that girl was in color uh, no matter what it said. Right. If you had a black and white TV or not, it said it's in color. So um. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that wasn't she at the uh, you know what never mind let's, let's skip that Actually, yeah we're not, Marlo's it. not taking up our time she's had her time <laughs> I'm going to have to go I'm going to have to go in and edit out the reference to Marlo Thomas <laughs> as in all my contracts I will not have her mentioned I will not have her mentioned <laughs> Right next to no, no nudity is the no Marlo Thomas. <laughs> Where there's no Marlo Thomas. Uh, okay. No, but um, actually, you did some really neat color ones. The, the, uh, the one about dentistry, dentistry and breakdancing, as far as I could work out. Uh, it's called Flash That Smile. That, mm-hmm. that you just did. I, think, I think it's one of your recent ones. Um, I, I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why there is this film about this. <laughs> I know or or what the forum was like where was this shown was it in yeah. Cla- yeah. Ooh, high school classes it. i always or, wonder where these things are shown oh you know what mary jo i never thought about that 
about where they showed that. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, who was it for? Was it? Um, I, yeah. Anyway. Well, no. I mean, that that one. Yeah, with the breakdancing girls talking about periodontal disease. I guess you might show it in health class. I, I just, I. I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> sometimes these things are clearly funded by, like, you know, the company that makes the refrigerator right. or the company right, that right. makes, you know, like you did You did a short that was entirely about convincing Darren McGavin to buy a new house. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, that was great. I love that one. <laughs> Whatever the hell. That I love that one. That one made me jealous of the houses. I was like, that's Oh, I know. I did. But we got to do that at the um, the um our MST reunion. Mary Jo and I got mm-hmm. to do that one live. And so yeah. we worked, we kind of, we kind of souped it up for the live thing. So if you get a chance to buy the, um, the reunion off of the Rift Track site, you'll have the new improved. Uh, yeah, no, we, saw, we, saw, we saw that. It was the one theater. we did. That was, that was one of our first ones. And we, we kind of found our voice along the way. So oh. we saw it in the theater, um, when you guys, how they broadcast it out. So oh, the, cool. To the yeah. theaters. Yeah. Yeah. Way over in Denver. We were watching, watching yep. the live show. Yay. Oh well, gosh. That's really fun how, how, how you guys do that and um so that everybody gets to kind of be an extended audience. I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, yes, um, it's been a, a great question. model. Yeah, I have a question, Jason, if you don't mind no, please. jumping in. This is gonna be a totally cliche question, you've probably gotten it a million times, but I'm real I'm actually curious as since you guys did come up in stand up comedy, how that is for you as women, given that it is sort of a male dominated, you know, industry if it, if you can be called that. You go deep, man. Well, Mary Jo, I think that you should it's answer it. A question, but I'm just curious about their answer. Well, I think for me, um, I the thing that I remember most uh, when I was starting out um, was it was during the Minneapolis um, comedy boom in the early '90s, late '80s, early '90s, and uh, I remember being introduced many, many times uh, like this. Our next comedian is a female comedian. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there was a, a tone of, of uh, you know, prepare yourselves because right. here comes the freak <laughs> show. And um, so I, that's, that's mm. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hesitating because I have so many uh, thoughts and opinions about it. Uh, I think I think now when uh, I we moved back to Minneapolis a few years ago from Austin, and I'm kind of dipping my toe back into stand up, and it feels like there are there are many more women comics now, mm-hmm. and which is tremendous. Uh, I think they still struggle with getting stage time. I think they they we still struggle with. Um, uh, being thought of as just sort of the the uh, you know novelty act, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I think it's changing, but I I hear women talking about that that it's still sort of this they can't get stage time. Um, so I think it's I I'm sorry I don't know where I'm going with this, but um, I I think it's it's better. I don't think it's where it should be. It seems like just uh, based anecdotally. Um. So, have I answered your question? That's great. No, that's a great answer. Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you. Um. Do you know? I think one of the um. I think everyone owes a what is that? I was going to say a gratitude of gratitude, a debt of gratitude <laughs> to um Joan Rivers. Um, may she rest in peace. Because. For me, um, I always thought of, well, she was a kind of a woman kind of like I was in the sense of, like, she really opened the door for, like, she was an average girl. She's a college girl doing this, you know. And if you ever read her biography, um, Enter Talking, it is so fun to read about her trying to break in. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing this? People, like, people pleading with her, her family. Like, why? You know, why are you embarrassing us why you might why should you be a stripper you know what are you doing and then, of course, right, right. And then she's so funny she's like i would have given anything for some of those strippers bodies but i had to tell jokes you know she's really funny in in it but i think she really talks i think that you can read that and you know what every female comedian has gone through but it was a little bit easier because she and a lot of comedians uh you know paved the way 
Mm-hmm. Thank you for mm-hmm. being so much more eloquent about it. You're right, Bridget. We 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 have had so many um, been inspired by so many women and sort of you know on the shoulders of giants, I guess. Tell us, tell her. Tell us, tell her. I love you. I know. I love her. Phyllis Diller, yeah. Joan Rivers, Toadie uh, Fields. What did you say? I'm sorry. Toadie Fields. Toadie she Fields, was, right. yeah, she was like on the Mike Douglas show and stuff. Do you, Mary Jo, do you remember her? I totally remember her because my mind was blown that you would get up there and you would be so in in my to my Midwestern sensibilities, um, brash and yes. loud and claiming your space. And she made a lot of. Um, jokes about her weight, yeah, and uh, I thought it was best if you didn't draw attention to your weight, so my mind was kind of blown, like, oh, here she is, she's owning it, and she's turning it oh. um, for her own means. I yeah, yeah. Roseanne, of course. Roseanne, totally. Roseanne Barr, Roseanne Barr is like well, the, the same well, way. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Joan Rivers, and I think Joan Rivers was lovely in those, those 60s appearances and then when she was hosting the Carson show but yeah like uh, Martha Ray was on TV all the time when I was a kid oh yeah the uh, big mouth yeah for me, it was, for me it was Lily Tomlin that I just was like oh, oh my so. god did you have the Lily Tomlin records Julia growing up no no just the t- all the TV appearances I just was like she's so fun I listen to those things over and over again I'm I sorry. never me it was Carol Burnett too like yeah I didn't Burnett, know yeah. that you could do that kind of sketch comedy and oh, yeah yeah it, yeah, mm. yeah way, and her her biography is super good too about about show business and and kind of heartbreaking um and um but i want to just quickly say one quick thing about what mj about what you're saying about not drawing attention attention to your body or you know whatever and that was the thing i learned from joan rivers was her the whole deal was you better tell them what you are, what they're seeing about you, you better tell them they're seeing it before they notice it or they huh. are going to eat you alive. Yeah, so yeah they'll you be say, all over that. Right. Yeah, so if if you think they're going to say, you know, that, you know, say you're, you've got big clown red hair and you're, you know, freckly, you better mention that right up front or they're wondering, they're just kind of wondering. So I think, yeah, yeah people yeah, think it, you, it was you, a way of, it was a way can, of surviving. Then you control it. Yeah, you, yeah. you control it. Yeah. But, Speaking as a as a man, so I'm I'm outside of that anxiety. I it it seems very unfair to me, you know, as a dad. No, but there's dad, plenty of men. I mean, I listen to the comedy channel all the time, and there's plenty of men like Josh Blue. I mean, there's all these guys who just are like, or there's um, I forget the guy's name who's a little person, and he just all that's his whole thing is about yeah. you know, okay, you're gonna see me. There's plenty of guys who talk about their weight, so I do think that men do it as well. But for sure, women are gonna be more more. Yeah, but, but Rodney Dangerfield never got up and said, well, you will notice that I don't, you know, that I'm not very svelte. That's I mean, not true. The whole not... thing is about not getting respect well, for all true. the various reasons. This is true. But, no, but but Woody Allen did. Woody Allen made his whole career on his foibles and his... Um, his, his uh, nebishiness, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. No, that's that's yeah. totally true. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're all in agreement on that. But, yeah. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. This has been a lot of fun. It's been really fun. Are we done? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 I can't. I can't continue to harass you with memories of Marla Thomas. And- Miss <laughs> 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 um, you, Guzman, you're a lawyer. Him. Will you tell him to cease and desist? <laughs> I'm not gonna- Send him a letter. A strongly worded letter. <laughs> Um, I want everybody to go to Rift Tracks and, and look for the shorts by Bridget and Mary, Mary Jo. I mean, for Pete's sake, this is really wonderful stuff. I I, I mean... Uh, You're which, hilarious, and I love how you guys support each other. That makes me happy oh. to hear you be so like, nice. Wow, about thank you. I'm so nice? glad you noticed it. Yeah, we have one out right now called That Nobody Tells Me What to Do, and that's set in... Uh, uh, when is that, Mary Jo? It's the 80s, too, oh, or the... That's the 80s, 80s? like... Early eighties, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and, then, like yeah. and then we have a full live f- uh, feature coming out very soon. We're recording it next week called "The Amazing um, Mr. X." Oh, <laughs> yes, the, the amazing, amazing Mr. Mr. X. Yes, X. Okay. Yeah, letter X. All right, now st- not the one with Humphrey Bogart. That was Doctor X, I guess. Anyway, oh, never mind. Right. Oh, yeah, Humphrey Bogart with like a weird skunk stripe in his hair. 
So oh, we should have done that one. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah. We should have yeah, riffed yeah. a good yeah. movie. Cool. You guys have been very, very kind. I really appreciate your time. Have a fantastic evening. I cannot wait to hear more from you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, Bridget and Mary Jo, Julia, thank you for joining us and keeping us on track and with sensible questions. And, <laughs> Our uh, pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Night, night. So long. <laughs>